Hello and welcome to another live code hangout. Today I'll be working on a small Flutter app. I've created an initial project and I'd like to work with some MIDI and see if I can get MIDI to display in a Flutter app on a piano keyboard. I have some ideas of how that could be useful, but I need to take the first steps. So I've scaffolded the initial app. I'll push that up and one second. I just remembered on, uh, for some reason on KDE, VS Code is not using my local keychain. So when I do operations via Git, SSH, it's going to ask me for my password over and over and over and over and over. So we'll delete this branch, this um, local repo. I've got it cloned up here, so everything's pushed to GitHub. So if I clone it by HTTPS, then uh, it'll resolve this little password problem. So here's the app source code. We'll open the directory. I might have to open it again. The folder sort of moved. And let's see what we get. Oh, maybe it was working actually. There we are. So if I open up the lib directory, main dart, we'll see the default code and I can run that in debug mode. So it's going to run pub get and we have the basic counter app light mode. So the first thing I would like to do is uh, flutter dark mode. I'd like to get in the habit of this theme, theme data. So this is, see if it still works. Okay, so we've got the theme, theme data, theme mode dark. Not necessarily going to have A toggle. Whoops. Where did the Flutter app go? Okay, that's a bit problematic. Did I? Oh, I closed it, I think. Okay. Okay. Yes, exited. Let's rebuild it. Now I can hot reload that. So upvote our question. Answer, even if it's not the correct one at this point. They also showed the toggle. So that could be cool. Uh oh, uh oh. Factory theme data. Theme mode. No name parameter with theme mode. Okay, yeah, it's. I'm 2022. Theme mode. Maybe I spelled it wrong. Theme mode. Under the. Ah, uh, okay, okay. It's under the top level object. There we go. Still kind of light, though, isn't it? Okay, so perhaps we have to define this. There we go. Okay, so you have to have the dark theme settings and the light theme settings. Or just. And I think, I don't know. This seems the more appropriate way of doing the dark theme definition. So the other aspect would be our scaffold background color looks decent and uh, the text is visible. Okay, so we've got some state here. We'll probably uh, end up destroying this state. So, hmm, we've got to break down this problem. So when we start coding, it's often where we have an idea or a task and we often will just go straight into coding that idea. And I haven't really done, so I'm doing that here. I'm not really clear on the path to follow where it usually is good to start, you know, with a diagram or pencil and paper or something like that. But in my mind's eye, I have an app with or without a title bar, app bar. And that app should display a piano or just even a MIDI note. Let's just start there on a screen. Instead of showing this number three, we'll show the MIDI note that's being played. So to do that, I'm going to give um, GBT my context. It'll respond, your current Flutter application is set up to use the dark theme by default as indicated by the theme mode, theme mode dark. Setting within the material app widget. This setting forces the app to use the dark theme provided by its theme data. If you want to switch between light and dark themes dynamically, you'll need to add some mechanism to toggle the theme mode property of your material app widget. 
However, since you set the theme mode to theme mode dark, it will only use the dark theme settings you have defined. If you have any specific questions about the code you posted, or if you need to make adjustments or understand how certain parts work, feel free to ask. So yeah, GPT is kind of summarizing the code here and offering assistance. I could do a dark theme toggle. Let's do, let's make a dark light theme toggle with a default to dark. To implement a light and dark theme toggle in Flutter with the default set to dark, you'll need to modify the My App class to be a stateful widget so that you can change the state of the theme during runtime. Here's a step-by-step -step guide. Change the My App to a stateful widget. And I'd like to actually rename it. to piano app. Good. And then we'll add a toggle function to switch between theme mode light and theme mode dark. Use a switch or similar widget to allow the user to toggle between the themes. Just for what it's worth, I'm thinking of having a switch right here. This is very conventional. You have the light and dark toggle up here. And maybe two little icons, uh, sun and moon. Okay, so we renamed it. Or we've made it into a stateful widget. Okay, so let's see if there's a refactoring tool here. No, that's cool though. Stateful widget. Now it needs to implement the create state and the create state will have this build function. So we'll take all of this from here up to here and move it into the create state. Piano state, create state, and we need a class. Piano state, widget build material app and just get this fully fleshed out here okay so it's copilot's a little bit lost interesting okay so it's copilot's just dis, uh implementing the primary interface here but uh, here we'll just paste this override in and more or less should be the same if i do a hot or, or just a restart or app restart yeah there we go boom 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 so still working the same so we've got theme data, dark theme settings. Okay. So then in the state for our piano app, we are going to set the theme mode to dark theme. And then we'll toggle, we'll create a function to toggle state right here before the build. All right methods before the overrides perhaps is conventional i'm not sure okay theme mode is on interesting and then where it's doing so we've got the build theme data use material three true home theme mode toggle theme so we're passing in this function to the actual the page which contains this scaffold interesting that means each page will need to implement this widget Perhaps what I can do is return the material app from the piano app. It's more or less where the app is defined. Now I'm changing context a bit. Let's move the material app definition to the piano app, formerly my app in the code above, so we can only to find the display mode toggle in a single location and since the material app shares a stronger relation semantic relationship to the piano app so we're going to refactor that piano app state toggle theme bool material app title piano app theme mode etc then we'll let's uh, let's actually delete the I'm going to delete the home page and oh, I guess the okay, so yes, yeah, so scaffold, I think. There we are. Hey, somehow <laughs> it's picking up on the dark and light theme. Very cool. All right, so then I need to have these correct theme data. So this is the dark theme. And so all I need to do is pick a primary color, use material three, color scheme for my default theme. 
let's see what happened here theme mode theme mode okay so i've got it hard coded but i wanted to toggle of course there it is wow it's pretty nice all right and we'll default it to dark it's all right uh it doesn't have to be off on anyway here's what it is here's our updated and simplified app you updated the flutter app code is uh, and it's well structured and simplified it includes a piano app stateful widget that manages the theme state allowing the user to toggle between light and dark mode themes using switch and app bar the material app widget is now encapsulates the piano app as the home screen presents a simple hello world text in the center there's a quick summary of the functionalities the theme mode variable holds the current theme mode defaulting dark mode the theme mode Toggle theme function updates the theme mode based on a switch position, triggering a rebuild of the app between light and dark themes. The home page is a simple scaffold with an app bar and a center widget containing the text message. Your init and state and dispose methods are overridden but currently do not contain any code. We're only calling super inside of them. Actually, if you need further, then we'll commit, push, pull request, merge and start on the next feature okay so it's it's being really helpful but uh i don't need the whole thing this was the only line that i needed but okay it's going to give me a lot of tokens there so right after the piano app we'll debug okay cool now i'm going to give it a bit more abstract uh request to see the context here i'd like to add sun and moon icons next to the um switch but i'm not going to say switch I'll say let's add sun and let's add sun and moon icons to indicate the light and dark mode state. So maybe this is too vague. I should be more specific. So let's add sun and moon icons to indicate the light and dark mode state on the corresponding side of the toggle switch. To add sun and moon icons to the switch to indicate light and dark mode, you can wrap the switch in a row widget and place icon widgets appropriately. Here's how you can update the app bar in your piano app. Very cool. So here's the app bar and in our actions we have a list that currently contains a switch so here's our list moon icon so I'll just grab the whole list so avoid copy and paste errors or hopefully reduce the likelihood of those happening okay I see so it's conditionally yeah it's <laughs> this is interesting it so I was thinking it would kind of misunderstand that okay so I'll fix this let's see so to the left should be moon to the right should be sun so this would be icons dark mode and this would be icons light mode i think it hallucinated it like it got the intention oh yeah well, let's uh, let's leave that comment in but this should be sun icon all right there we go so we have a basic uh, light dark toggle so my basic prompting philosophy i would say or sort of framework of thinking is 10 80 10. if i start off with a good 10 percent a good prompt done with enough information and specificity i'll get the generative model to give me 80 percent of the output that i need it's almost there sometimes it's right on the money is just perfect output but oftentimes i need to do about 10 more percent of work as we saw here i needed to just fix these icons so it's sort of like a balance and it ends up with this 80 20 split if we get this good 10 percent the model can do about 80 percent of the work so saving me all the fiddling and uh, syntax and all that but I still have to do that last 10%. So I have to have a good prompt and be able to take it to completion. So with that regard, I very rarely see the, well, the model can't do 100% of the work. You have to prompt it. So that's the first thing. So far, the models don't do work, to my knowledge, without prompting. So you'll always have to do some portion. And it's not common when you're working with more complicated tasks especially to get 90% output from a 10% prompt sometimes I've gotten like a one prompt output that was just ready to roll 
or like a basic blog article, for example, on GPT-4. But typically, yeah, it, at least it takes one prompt, one output, and some work. And then I often end up iterating on the work. Even we can see that here. I'm iterating on the work. So through the conversation, I'm still following this 80-20 rule in a way. But, you know, now we're adding the switch. Now we're adding um, tweaking layout or, or things like that. Okay, but that's a bit of an aside. So implement dark mode. Dark and light mode toggle. I could almost just publish this as a hello world app with dark and light mode. This is a good tutorial. So let me just think about that for a second. Crit pull request. I think a lot of people would need a would be interested in a dark and light mode toggle. So we'll come back over here and I've uh, got a pull request open. I'll merge that. So that, let's see. Let's write a short blog post describing how to make a Flutter app with dark and light mode toggle using the code as an example. So let's write a short blog post describing how to make a Flutter app with dark and light mode toggle using the above code as an example. The blog post should be around 500 words and use an engaging, helpful tone of voice, yet straightforward wording. Include the code examples at appropriate portions of the text and include descriptions for each line of code. I think they understand that. Disregard the init state and dispose method since they aren't meaningful at this point. You know, that's what we get. Tile crafting, a theme toggle flutter app, switch between light and dark modes with ease. As more users come to expect a customizable viewing experience in their apps, providing a light and dark mode toggle has become a staple in app development. Flutter, with its rich set of widgets and properties, makes this not only possible, but pleasantly straightforward. That's true, it was very straightforward. In this post, we'll make a uh, walk through how to add a theme toggle for your flutter app complete with an intuitive sun and moon icons with intuitive sun and moon icons yeah boing boing <laughs> this is nice let's start by setting the stage with our main function and piano app widget we launch our app with the run app const piano app which serves as the entry point i'll rename it in the article our piano app is a stateful widget because theme toggling will change the app state so here we have just a bare bones app next we define a piano app state to hold our theme state we initialize the theme mode to dark with theme mode equals theme mode dark. Our toggle theme function takes a boolean, is on, interesting, and sets the theme mode to light or dark depending on the switch's position. This is where set state shines, notifying the framework to redraw the widget with the updated theme mode. Yeah, so I, I suppose it's that the toggle is on. Makes sense. On, off. Okay, it's turning the light on, turning the light off. <laughs> nice. And lights should be off by default. Save power. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we got that toggle thing and dark code fences. And in the build method, we craft our material app, which now includes the theme toggling logic. By setting debug show checkmark banner to false, we ensure a clean UI without the debug tag. So yeah, that is nice. So here's the piano thing. For our themes, we define both dark theme and dark theme and theme. The dark theme uses brightness dark, while theme uses a color scheme seeded with blue for light mode. Yeah, whoops. And blue is decent. I like it. Uh, didn't mention Material 3. No, it's all right. Now, the star of the UI, the scaffold within the Material app's home. The app bar not only holds our title, but also a row of icons and a switch that control the theme mode. Dark mode, light mode, 
but the code is telling me different, right? We had to change that. This is a um, ternary statement, so it's going to check that and then come on, get off there. Conditionally show the icon, which was why the icons were changing with the state. So yeah, it's the uh, model is hallucinating just a little bit. By using Flutter's theme data and theme mode, we created a seamless way to allow users to switch between light and dark themes. This not only caters to their visual preferences, but it can also help save battery life on OLED screens and reduce eye strain in low light conditions. Boom. Those are crucial. I was having some major eye strain yesterday with working with the uh, Langflow user interface and documentation. As you can see, I've got everything in dark mode here. I'm really, I just need it to be a little bit more subdued. Uh, it's just painful otherwise to stare at a bright shining wall of white implementing a theme toggle in your flutter app not only enhances your user experience but also showcases the dynamic capabilities of your app with just a few lines of code you can give your users the power to choose their preferred theme making your app more inclusive and user friendly happy coding i like it it's good yeah, and that's a one shot prompt um i still have to do the 10 percent basically to fix the minor details but let's go ahead and publish this. So I'll click somewhere. Let's just go into publishing mode. Here it goes. And we'll publish this on dev.2. For your not familiar, bright wall of light, <laughs> dark mode. Uh, dev2 is a like a community of developers. And uh, it's sort of, at this point, like there's not spammy advertisements. There's not modal dialogues telling you to sign up for an e uh, email newsletter or register to view full articles uh, like Substack and um, Medium respectively. Uh, does it have dark mode settings? Let me just check this in case there's some personal information. Over here, settings. The settings are dark. Customization, dark theme. Okay, I see what happened. It's it did have my setting for dark theme, but I had to, since I had signed in, it didn't refresh the page. There's some dynamic stuff happening there. So yeah, so it's got a dark mode theme. And what we'll do, what we'll do is have a little bit of fun here. 8.30, I have about a half hour. Um, we will post, make a new post. There we are. And I'll, and yeah, that's a pretty good thing. You know, pretty good, pretty good. Hopefully it's not too long. Uh, Flutter programming. Uh, accessibility or user experience and tutorial. Yeah, very good, customizable. Uh, one thing I usually do is run it through um, Grammarly. Let's see if I've got Discord installed here. And I also, yeah, got Discord. I also generate a cover image. It's always nice to have a cover cover image. Discord, new version available. Ooh, buddy. I think I got it. My browsers keep freezing. It's like, what's going on there? I have to like close and reopen it. Oh, it's because I have two windows. Oh, there it is. Save, cancel that. Done. Download, install. Uh, actually, let's try, let's try. New chat with Dolly install package. Oh, okay. So it's installing my thing. I'll put it over here. GPT Dolly. Oh, come on. Oh, okay. Aspect. It's like it is responsive, Dolly. But the typing is not happening. Done. The typing is working here. They have this weird aspect ratio. I get it. It's 42 or 420. Aspect ratio 1000 by 420. An image of a starry night blending from left to right into a sunny day, signifying the transition from dark to light. So I don't know if Dolly can do aspect ratio stuff. It doesn't give you much of an interface. The uh, chat interface is just going to prompt Dolly on its own. We'll look at the prompt it generated. Meanwhile, I'll come back to my pose. We'll call it Dark Light App. Ooh, sounds kind of cool. And out of curiosity, if I do theme mode yellow, 
Just curious. Or orange? What does it look like? Yellow? Golden? I'll leave it alone. So there's no instances of piano. It did adhere to the, uh, <laughs> this is cool, aspect ratio, I think. But the prompt wasn't quite, quite there. Let's see. So maybe I can change my prompt or I can try Discord. So we can try, please generate a mid-journey prompt for the same idea. To create a prompt for an image generation model like mid-journey, you would want to describe the scene with as much detail as needed to convey your concept. Since I can directly generate images for you here, I've already done so. However, if you're looking for how to construct a prompt, it might look something like this. Create an image that illustrates a seamless transition from night to day. On the left side, depict a dark starry night with a crescent moon gradually blending into a soft pastel colors of dawn in the middle. Then as the scene moves left to the right, show a clear sunny day with bright blue sky and golden sun rising at the horizon. Interesting. Include some fluffy white clouds scattered across the direct day sky. The aspect ratio should be panoramic, emphasizing the gradual change from dark to light. All right, so there's panoramic could be a good keyword though. There's where it lost the thread though. I need that specific aspect ratio. Imagine an image. So there we have the aspect ratio. That's good. And it looks like we've got dark to light. They're hard transitions at this point, which might be okay. Dark light, light dark, light dark. So this is the closest to the dark light theme. I've got some trees in the foreground. Yeah, this is cool. So yeah, I like it. Except that that it's like an eclipse there <laughs> all the uh, several eclipses okay this is kind of cool but it got the order wrong <laughs> this is the one that got the order right so let's see if i can create some variations of number one one two three four same prompt i mean it was good output I'll try something I'll be right back a little bit worse but okay better angle worse background trade-offs all right we're still waiting for the thing to complete so let's see actually I'm gonna get some water looks like it's frozen Darn. try it again double the prompt but uh, something's wrong with it okay now both of them are working left right left right this is good so these top two are good I <laughs> like a little tree here they can be distinct scenes this is nice though ah oh. <laughs> this is nice but it's like squished the moon what happened to the moon this is cool all right wow what do we get here dark light these are interesting ones okay now i can't i'm not just trying to say the moon can't be out during the daytime but I would like the sun to be in the daytime. So this is the closest one. Let's go with this. The sun and moon look the same. This is kind of nice, a vertical transition. Let's go with that one, actually. It's not what I was asking for. I was asking, I was too focused on this horizontal thing, but this is nice. Dark light toggle. We will upscale number four. So yeah, sometimes it's just learning to kind of compromise and accept things as they are. <laughs> That's a hard thing to do when you have a particular way you want it. But especially with the uh, generative AI, it's like <laughs> going to do things sort of how it does it, but within guidelines and constraints. So it's a, it's a balance. Now I could just do some strong variations of this just to see uh, if there are usually the first one is good is the best for some reason. When I do these variations, I very rarely get a result that was more appealing than the first one. Not sure why. Or if it's just my imagination. This one's interesting. <laughs> that one's crazy. You know, I sort of like this one the best. Okay. It's huge and it's got stars in it. So it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Dang it. This one did my horizontal split. All right, so I'm going with this one. 
We got the moon. There's no stars in the moon. <laughs> the sun's coming up. We'll save that image and downloads. Or just my desktop for the moment. And dev2, add cover image, desktop. I think it's good, suitable for a desire to share. We'll preview it, publish it, preview it. Crafting a theme toggle flutter app, dark light, switch between light and dark modes with ease. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, and then I need to fix the, um, the toggle code, uh, the icon code, because it's actually, this should be dark mode, the dark icon that is. And this should be light mode, light mode icon. Excellent. All right, let's uh, publish. I can still edit it and things, but I think publishing is okay. So there we go. Crafting a theme toggle flutter app, switch between light and dark modes with ease. Published on dev.2. Fun stuff, I like that. Sharing, you know, uh, things we learn along the way. Um, promoting inclusivity, accessibility, knowledge sharing, of course and open source development. So I've merged this pull request, deleted the branch in a future session. I don't really have time today, but I will continue working with the piano app. Again, the source code is on GitHub. We will work with some MIDI data or displaying piano notes. I'm not sure which order, probably the MIDI data first, just to get a some information on the screen, what node is pressed, and to learn the structure of the data. That'll kind of inform the design of the piano keyboard. I'll have to think about how to associate particular keys with notes. Perhaps we'll have a global state that tracks the MIDI notes that are currently engaged, or where we've received note on events but have not received note off events, and then looks at those notes in the octave range and um, passes them into a keyboard, which in turn passes them into the individual keys of the keyboard, each key having its own um, note in octave. I have to look again at the data structure and it'll use set state to toggle the background color uh, of the key based on if it matches the MIDI input. There will be nuances like how to render a piano keyboard. Uh, I won't probably get hyper realistic or even stagger the keys. So for the first pass, I'll just keep it as simple as possible. Okay, well, this has been another live code hangout. Thanks for your time. I hope you're doing well and have a great day.